if you're using WordPress as your content management system, using something like WP GraphQL to query it headlessly, you might start to run into some problems such as maybe you're getting some failed builds or just slow builds because of the amount of requests that have to get hit to your WordPress instance. Now, one of the issues is one of the common ways to make those requests are by using post requests, which aren't as easily cacheable, meaning every time you're making all those requests to your WordPress instance, they're not going to be cached, which can start leading to some timeouts. So let's see how we can fix this by using caching mechanisms to our benefit to avoid having those issues. Now, this issue is something that I ran into firsthand, where every time I tried to deploy my website, my Next.js WordPress website using WP GraphQL, I kept hitting 504 errors when trying to query all of my data from WP Engine. Whenever I would try to actually run this locally, it was successful, but I'm hitting a lot of pages and then grabbing a lot of data as part of that request. And while there are definitely some optimizations I can make, I'm still running into that problem of hitting too many endpoints during that build process in a rapid amount of time. Now, depending on when I run it locally, I'm getting around 12 seconds, maybe a little bit more than that every time I actually run this build. And when I run it in Netlify, it might take a little bit different time because it's not running on my local MacBook, but we can still see that it was able to hit all those 504 errors and timeouts because of how it was actually trying to be rendered in the way that Netlify is actually loading Next.js on its servers. Now, the way that I'm currently making all these requests is I'm using the Apollo client where I'm creating a new instance of the Apollo client, where with that client, I'm gonna make my GraphQL query and pass in any variables that I want, ultimately getting the data response for my content. So like I said before, these are all gonna be HTTP post requests. So whether it's grabbing all the post data, or if I wanna grab some just metadata from my site, it's gonna be making those post requests in rapid succession every time I try to run that build for every single page that it's running at that first build time. Now, while creating a post request is probably the most common way of making those GraphQL requests, we can actually use the HTTP, HTTP get method, which then lends itself to being able to be more easily cached. To see how this works, I'm going to grab this query from my site data. I'm going to paste it in a new tab just so we can see what this looks like. I'm going to add some commas, but then what I'm going to also do is I'm going to break this down and remove all the empty space, where once I do, I'm going to copy that query. And on my URL here, I'm going to paste in question mark query equals, and I'm going to paste that in. And once I hit that, we can now see that I get that general settings data, including my site metadata. So I was able to easily just make that get request by simply passing in my query as a query parameter. But that doesn't mean that I necessarily have to go through all of my queries and update them to have this query parameter. One of the nice things with the Apollo client is I can actually pop in right into this HTTP link method or instance, and I can add use get for queries, and I'm gonna set that to true, where now if I run that build again, and as we can see, we easily just shaved off two seconds from the build. And while that doesn't seem like a lot, I'm also running a kind of slim amount of content on here, but it's because if we're hitting that same endpoint over and over making the same get request, it's going to just return it cached every time it hits it after that first instance. I even ran it again, which is going to take even more advantage of those cache instances. So we can see that it dropped down even to seven seconds. So there's a lot of potential here between content sites, whether it's the small content sites like mine or giant sites that want to be able to take advantage of caching strategies. Now, the cool thing is we don't have to be using the Apollo client in order to do this. This is just one way of easily being able to opt into it. But if we wanted to create our own little GraphQL uh, client, for instance, we can simply use the fetch API where I'm just going to pass in that query parameter dynamically where I just have some simple queries going on. So I'm able to easily just replace all on the white space and it's going to quote just work. And while on this branch, I haven't converted all the different GraphQL requests to that particular client, so they're not all making GET requests, but even so, we're still getting those benefits that we saw from that first one just from me updating a few of the global requests to that GET request. But even after just updating a few of those global requests to GET requests, my deploys were now successfully able to run on Netlify. Now, if you're familiar with caching, you might be thinking, how do I actually invalidate that cache whenever I want to update the data? Such as what if I post a new post, I'm querying all my posts, but it's still gonna return those old set of posts. One of the ways that we can do this is by adding a WP GraphQL plugin called WP GraphQL Smart Cache, which comes straight from the WP GraphQL family. But once I install that and it's all activated, I can now go over to my GraphQL settings page 
it has this nice cache tab, which is going to have all the controls that we have available using this smart cache plugin. And the nice thing about this is whenever I do something like update a post, it's going to help automatically control and validating, invalidating that cache to make sure that I'm getting the most up to date information for my requests. We even have the ability to log our purge events, or we can even just purge now if we want to just bust all the cache for our GraphQL cache so that we have the most fresh up-to-date data, even though that's going to, of course, make all of our queries slow until they get uh, warm again. Now, just as another way to see that this caching is working, I'm going to load up this little fetch request, which is going to hit that same endpoint that I had before. And all this is going to do is make a client side request to that GraphQL endpoint after I actually went through and purge the cache. Now, if I look at the network tab and I get rid of the term uh, console there, we can see that as I go through my headers, I'm going to find this X cache where I'm going to see miss. But let's go back to the console. I'm going to make that request again. And we can see that that was really quick that second time. But now if I go back to the uh, con to the network tab, I can go back down and I can find that X cache and we can see that it's a hit, meaning it returned that cache data for me. If I go ahead again and purge this, save the changes, make another request, we can see that was a little bit slower than it was before. If we go back to the network tab, we again should have that miss, which we do. And if we go to the console yet one last time, just to prove that it is working after busting that cache, we can see that it was fast and we can go there and again, we can see we get that hit. But some queries are going to be more complex than others. I was just using a simple query to show this as an example that you can do it if you want with your own fetch client. But probably more often than not, you want to use a GraphQL client that's going to handle this for you, where Apollo is going to actually go through and parse and read the actual query and break it down to make it a get request for you easily. And the only thing that you might have some limitations on is mutations, but I'm not using any mutations. I'm just using straight queries to pull in and read my data. So this works perfectly fine for me. Now, there is one caveat to all this. Next.js app router does have some more advanced caching mechanisms, which can include also caching post requests, which some of the methods that they make available, but those are things that we can explore later in a different video. Keeping track of the performance of our API endpoints isn't just important for making sure that we can have performant builds, but it's also important when we're actually making those API requests in the browser to give as performant experience as we can for our visitors. Speaking of Next.js App Router, if you want to learn how to start using the available APIs to do things like sitemaps and RSS feeds, which are critical for content sites like WordPress sites, check out my video where we do just that and we learn how to use the sitemap API and the custom routes API. Before you drop, make sure you hit thumbs up, subscribe, and click that little notification bell for more web dev tutorials. Thanks for watching.